everyone! So today I am reviewing the book The Nigger Girl by Anne Tyler. So, the story of The Nigger Girl, which is a great name. I love the name. What an excellent name for a retelling of um, Shakespeare's The Taming of the Shrew. Definite props on the name. I also love the cover. The cover is amazing. This is such an amazing title image and it totally drew me in. As much as I hate to admit that I judge books by their covers, I totally do and I can't help it. And this cover was so beautiful that the book jumped the queue in my reviewing pile of books and I read it before others. The story of The Nigger Girl is pretty much, if you're familiar with any of the retellings of The Taming of the Shrew, then you will know the story. But basically in this version, Kate Batista is a young girl around 29-ish, so young depending on what you think is young, um, and she works in a sort of job she's not overly thrilled about. She's an assistant teacher at a school and she's constantly getting into trouble because she's got a bit of a brash tone about her. She's a bit of a prickly pear. Um, she's also living at home with her teenage sister Bunny and pretty much keeping house for her scientist father who's very eccentric. Her scientist father works in a lab pretty much 24-7 and he works with a Russian scientist who is his lab partner. Um, Peter, the Russian scientist, is originally from a small place in Russia. Yeah, obviously, he's Russian. Peter, the Russian scientist, is um, about to be sent home because his visa is about to expire. Um, Dr. Batista is very concerned about this because he needs Peter to continue his research project and without him he feels like it's all going to turn to nothing and he's going to lose everything he's worked for. So he goes about trying to convince Kate to marry Peter in order to keep him in the country. As you can imagine Kate's not overly thrilled about this and uh, being a shrew, you know, what do you expect? Um, and she gets quite annoyed, but then it starts to tick things over in her head and she starts to think, huh, am I really content with what I've got right now? I've kind of boxed myself into this crazy small life of mine and it's not really fulfilling me. But I'm, so she starts to think it through anyway and that starts the whole thing turning. Uh, it has been done as well as a whole other bunch of Shakespeare plays has been reimagined by other well-known authors such as, I will read them to you, uh, Margaret Atwood has reimagined The Tempest, Chase, Tracy Chevalier has done Othello, uh, Gillian Flynn, which you may know from Gone Girl, um, has done Hamlet, Howard Jacobson has done The Merchant of Venice, Joan Nespo has done Macbeth, Edward St. Auburn has done King Lear, and Tyler's done The Taming of the Shrew, and Jeanette Winterson has done The Winter's Tale. I used to be huge about Shakespeare a while ago when I was in high school, and I was into theatre, and I went to drama school, so of course you kind of can't avoid it, and so I went through a huge Shakespeare phase, and I kind of made myself completely and utterly sick of Shakespeare, I have to say. Because for me, when I was a teenager, the film um, 10 Things I Hate About You came out, and it was such a good reworking of that play then. So it was kind of like, does this really need to be redone? Does it need to be done again? You know, and there was Kiss Me Kate. And so this t tale, The Taming of the Shrew, has been reimagined quite a few times now. So is there really anything else that you can add, was my question when I went into it. Anne Tyler is a best-selling author. Yes, she, I've owned, I must confess, this is the second book of hers I've read, the first one being The Spool of Blue Thread, which came out a few years ago and I reviewed. Um, prior to that I haven't read any of her work, but there are people who love her work and write about her work and absolutely cannot get enough of her books. And sure, maybe I need to do some more reading. But when I read this, The Spool of Blue Thread, I couldn't put it down, yes, but I also didn't feel like it was... I was gaining a lot by reading it, but yes, I read it through to the end and I could not stop reading it. I was enthralled, intrigued, entertained, and that's, that's, that's fantastic, absolutely, but I just felt like there was a hollowness to the point of the plot and a hollowness to why the story was being told. You can tell a lot of stories about a lot of things, but sometimes, like that book in particular, I reviewed it and I called it an onion because it was very multi-layered. There were a lot of characters, there were a lot of things going on, there were a lot of questions being asked as you go. 
But you peel away and you peel away and then you get to the middle of the onion and there's nothing there. There's just like an empty hollow bulb where a story or a plot or a purpose should be. And I got to the end of the book and I just went, well that was a waste of my time. So I felt similar coming into this book. It was a little bit ominous because of course if that's how I felt about the other book I read then this one. But um, I couldn't put it down. Not surprisingly, I could not put this down either. I came along and I started reading it and straight away I noticed Anne Tyler's strong, loud use of third person narrative. She very much writes, as she had in the other book I've read, um, she very much writes like she's telling a tale. She's very present in her narrative, which I don't know, it can work, it has worked in the past. I've read other books, like The Book Thief, where the narrative is very, very present and, and, and almost quirky and comic and entertaining, whereas I thought this was her style when I started reading I was like, oh, she's doing that present narrative thing where it's really loud and really obvious and really bludgeoning. But then I realised that, no, it's just the style she writes in. Because of her style of writing, coming across quite old-fashioned, I didn't believe that the young characters, such as Kate in this story and Kate's younger sister who was named Bunny in this version I didn't believe that they were real people because they seemed old-fashioned because of the way it was written um, Bunny is meant to be 17 a 17 year old in, in modern time that hardly picks up her cell phone mm, I don't know any she very really t seems to be on Instagram and Twitter and all of that and I don't know it just seems odd to me because that's what teenagers are doing these days all the time um one of the parts i'm just going to find for you an example of something that i didn't believe a 29 year old would ever say in conversation ever i don't know if that's just like maybe this is because there's a huge cultural difference between new zealand casual speak and american casual speak but to me this line here um sounds incredibly dated and like old fashioned and unrealistic. Um, when Kate says to a young child who's complaining about these girls getting mad at him, well never mind, they'll get over it by and by. In my opinion, no one would ever say that. I've never said that in my life. And I'm not 29, I'm older than 29, just so you know. So yeah, weird thing to say. The other thing that came up for me for Bunny, um, Bunny is the 17 year old sister, remember? 17 year olds who currently hardly even exist without a phone in their hand, let alone like bring their face out of the phone for 5 seconds. Um, this 17 year old apparently said, come along Edward, when she was walking out of the room and telling her um, Spanish teacher or Spanish study friend to come along with her. Who ever says that? Who says, come along my dear? It's just not realistic. I just don't actually think anyone would ever say that. So there were these little tiny things constantly for me that kept making me snap out of the book and go, oh my god, that's so unrealistic. I don't know. Is it because I read as a reviewer so I'm constantly reading books and criticizing in my head? Am I just a really mean person? Possibly. But these were huge, like, red flags for me. It pulled me out of it and made me be like, this is not set now. Like, to the point where I started scanning the blurb again, reading the front, going, when is this set? Because it cannot be set in 2015 or 2016. It has to be set like 2005, 1965. I don't know. A long time ago. The English is not realistic. I'm sorry. I want to say, as I said, this is all just my opinion, and I also said some nice things, so don't get mad at me for just being honest and saying what I think. Again, Anne Tyler has a fantastic way of creating characters that draw you in. Even if, perhaps, like I said, in this case they're not overly believable, she does still have a ma an amazing ability to draw you in, get you interested, make you care, and keep you reading. So beside the fact that I was reading this book thinking, oh my gosh, a 17 year old would never say that, um, a 29 year old would never say that, and so on, Despite all of that, I couldn't put it down and I had to finish it to the end. So it's still a good book and it's still an interesting retelling of a Shakespeare classic. Despite the fact that I didn't believe a lot of the, the characters were perhaps written in the now, they were still believable characters. 
um, the Russian lab partner of the father, Pitor. He is incredibly believable and um, his language differences are believable, all of it. I, I enjoyed his character and I found him refreshing and I enjoyed like getting to know Kate and watching her warm to this person. So even though I say that it's slightly dated and not of the now, it's still a very readable book and absolutely draws you in and makes you finish it. However, the other thing I'm going to talk about is did this one really need to be retold again? As of when I was a teenager, we had 10 Things I Hate About You. That kind of stole the show for me. I don't know. Can you really do better than Julia Stiles and Heath Ledger? Can you really do better than that when you're coming, when you're talking about retelling Shakespeare and making it more ap appealing again? I don't think you can. I really don't think you can. I think it was done well enough then as a film. But hey, why not? I'm not going to complain. So that is my review of Anne Tyler's The Naked Girl. Um, if you would like to read my full review, you can do so. I have written it um, and posted it to my blog, themadisons.com. Um, you can check the down bar below for the URL and it'll take you straight to the link and you can read up. And uh, don't forget to give this a thumbs up and um, leave a comment if you disagree with me and tell me what you thought of this book. Thanks guys. Bye.